Welcome to another episode of Galactic Ambassadors podcast. My name is Julia Balaz, and today I'm joined by Margot, currently based in Malta, right? And originally from Poland. Welcome, Margot. Margot is our recently certified quantum soul guidance practitioner. Our connection goes back to 2017, actually. Margot was one of my QHHD clients who visited my beautiful setting back then in east of Ireland, where she came for QHHT session. We had amazing experience and really beautiful connection. Even back then, Margot shared her passion for creative expression, creative self-expression, and she gifted me this beautiful journal, handmade with gorgeous kind of DIY tools, you know, whatever you find, whatever inspires you, and like just such a beautiful, beautiful, delicate work explore your imagination. So I still remember her her beautiful presence. You know, certain clients stand out. When you see thousands of people, you forget many faces, but uh, Margaret always stayed. And then I was so, so happy to see her when she reconnected again after I uh, published my courses. And uh, she joined the Quantum Soul Guidance Practitioner course just over two years ago. It's kind of your anniversary, right? Around this time. So it's so beautiful that you reached this milestone I'm so happy to see you reaching the time where you can professionally offer your services and share your beautiful light love with the world. How does it feel to be certified quantum soul guidance practitioner, being listed and setting up your beautiful website? I can't wait to show that too. How are you feeling lately? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, this is uh, certainly a milestone for me. It feels like a beginning of new chapter in my life definitely up till whatever was happening whatever i went through whatever i did for a living it kind of i feel prepared me for for this chapter of my life and yeah i'm really glad that i listened to my heart when i saw you basically so since the qhht I did follow your YouTube channel when years later you posted your quantum soul guidance sessions with clients, the, the snippets of it and the long ones. I listened to all of it. And the first time when I watched it, my heart just jumped out of my chest and said, yes, this is it. That's that's what I want to do. At that time, your course wasn't available yet. I think it was still in process of creation however i didn't have to wait long and you put it online and i just jump on the first opportunity i was one of the first ones i think i believe so and i actually recall one of your comments then on the video where you said the more when you're watching these sessions the more certain you feel that this is what you want to do so it's just warm to my heart and seeing you progress through the journey, taking your time, going through all kinds of transformations on a personal level, and then receiving your certification documents, the case studies, the feedback from your clients, and really visually also beautiful reports that you send. You really have a gift for for what looks beautiful and how you express yourself So I always love seeing something like that. Out of all the compliments that I get, what makes me the happiest and really feel the joy that makes me jump uh, (laughs) and feel like dancing is when I see someone coming out in a way where they can offer service that is valuable and then recognized by, by their clients as well. You know, knowing you for several years, if I may say kind of like in the closet or, or hiding or not fully expressing yourself and just seeing you coming out little by little, even through our Q&A calls, how you were finding courage to to come on camera and speak, how first time your voice was shaky, but you did it anyway with a big smile and you took your time, paused and all. Like It, it took a lot of courage for you to start coming out. And then on the next Q&A call, you felt a little bit more confident and more and more until it feels very natural, it seems, uh, when you're on com- camera now. So, but it's a journey, you know, and I really want to just point this out to help people realize that this doesn't come easy to any of us. Like we have to put ourselves out there through the uncomfortable zone and just plow through it and eventually it becomes easier and easier that certainly was also a journey for me so i just want to command you for your perseverance and just following 
um, your calling, your passion. I'm so happy you're here now. Yes, it was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone numerous times, but it's been happening throughout my life anyway, however big one. And the course, it's been an initiation, that's for sure. Many things that, like let's say intuition, I've been following in my life quite a lot however i never look at it as uh, having uh, psychic abilities or you know connecting somewhere deeper because it was never cultivated in my family when i was growing up that wasn't really a thing so this opened up my eyes to many things and gifts and talents that i myself didn't know so astrology and galactic astrology and reading Akashic Records and all that definitely helped me grow a lot. I'm so happy to see the galactic center on your ascendant. You have sun in Pisces. So there is a lot of connection to the expanded consciousness or the quantum fields. I'm really happy that you're now in position where you can start consciously exploring. Your ascendant is at 29 degrees of Sagittarius, if I may share that. So the ruler of your chart is uh, Jupiter in your 10th house, house of career, public service, you know, when you how you come out to the world, your Jupiter is in Scorpio, and it's actually conjunct uh, crooks a crooks. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you're coming back full circle in terms of your previous incarnations, where it's time for you to share the wisdom and the being the seer, the guide for others, the way you may have been previously, whereas before there may have been the religious dogma blocking uh, anything in that regard. And it's a similar story as many other practitioners that we've had on the, on the call here on our podcast, where you too have grown in religious environment. W would that be correct? But it wasn't too strong, too too strict. Not too strict, no. But as growing up in Poland, basically most of Polish households, I guess, they were um, Catholics. It was in the 90% of households, I think they were quite religious. And they were at the time when I was growing up, the religion was actually in the school taught as another subject. So it was to, to that extent, all of us basically went uh, and had the first communions. The Holy Communion and then confirmation. No, but before the Holy Communion, when you born, baptism. it's... Uh, Baptism, exactly. Well, I do want to point out here that you have a crux conjunct, not really square, where square opposition would usually speak of some unresolved trauma. But when you have uh, Jupiter and your midheaven conjunct this very spiritual star, it may actually manifest as you feeling called to bring some sort of higher spiritual principles into your work and just observing your own personal journey, how you it is important to get to know yourself better on a deep level including exploring your ancestral lineage the inner childhood and just really going through the depths of your psyche which can also be indicated by the ruler of your eighth house eighth house is on the cusp of leo ruled by sun and that's in your second house and in pisces having that deep spiritual understanding of your deep unconscious is important it's one of your core values probably so then helping others to do something like that it's as if your own path was preparing you for the journey that you will witness others take and um, hold space for them so i think it's quite beautiful to see that there and actually until 2017 i would think it was late 2016 actually when my what i call consciousness expansion <laughs> happened um, up till then around that time anyway i've been waking up to to that higher wisdom to quantum really and i remember the first do you recall the fifth element movie i Where do yeah that's so, so interesting I, because that the the main character lilu the, there's something in her that reminds me of you oh. i don't know what it is but <laughs> i can totally so really see why that would have been the connection yeah that's that's amazing i 
felt like her for a few months, really. I can and see it. Yeah. Just like the way when there is that scene when she's in front of TV and she's just learning about humanity, the languages, everything, the history, everything, everything. And I've been like that. Mm -hmm. uh, YouTube was my rabbit hole when I went into and I really studied all sorts of religions going through Buddhism, yoga, uh, not to the depths, depths, but just enough to know that basically what I needed to know, I guess. And that's when I also, for the first time, came across quantum as a word. One of the quantum healing techniques which I started with was quantum touch. Then this led me to Dolores Cannon and QHHT technique and back then and I think belief is still the thing that you're doing it only in person so that's how I found you you were the only practitioner in Ireland that actually I could found at the time so here we are <laughs> I love it I think I'm gonna rewatch that movie again uh, it's a good one you also have your Saturn conjunct Arcturus and Spica, another two very powerful spiritual stars. So in connection to Saturn, again, indicating some previous incarnations, connection to this very high frequency consciousness. And then your Pluto is conjunct Shapley Attractor and Surma, another spiritual star connected to very strong lineage of people that carry the light in this mm -hmm. world. And your moon in Gemini conjunct Pleiades. So you have mm -hmm. really, really beautiful chart infused with a lot of light. I'll just add two more. You also have your lunar nodes. So south node conjunct the Lyra Nebula connection to the ancient lineage. Just, I feel really honored that you are drawn to this um, beautiful modality of quantum soul guidance and I look forward for you to experience the spontaneous kind of activation of deeper and leap deeper galactic layers of your being because it's usually through people that the best can come out of us when the time is right and they are ready for the information you know the information that can come through you can be truly beautiful and I've seen it in your case study reports, the frequency felt high vibrational. And then when I see your chart with all these alignments, it makes a lot of sense. So, so happy for you. What was it like for you to start practicing this modality? Was it challenging at the beginning? And did you have moments where you just wanted to like, no, it's not going to work? Or actually it was guiding you quite nicely um, and smoothly. Can you talk a little bit about those experiences when you decide, okay, I'm going to look at the chart and start practicing what's in the course? I don't think there was anything challenging for me because the way you structured the course, the way it's been written, it's so easy to digest. At least for me, it was absolutely blowing my mind in a way of I didn't expect it would be so comprehensive. Every aspect you took care of, let's say, even from the business point of view, how to set up the site. What was maybe challenging for me, it was to some extent challenging because many things were new, as in so far what I've done in my life was far from astrology, oracle cards, psychic reading, Akashic records. That wasn't anything that I doubled in. However, I did this classical Hellenistic astrology background at least. I'm glad having these basics, but I much so more enjoy going into this higher octave of it when it comes to the galactic. That's when my heart is pulling me basically yeah when it comes to the curse always loved to connect the dots so this is for me just joy to <laughs> work with and and look for the clues and evidence and all that i always enjoyed you know the de detective stories <laughs> movies and stuff so yeah, that's great to hear yeah that's us and i always you know hear people who are not wired this way they would be like why do you do all this uh, you know for some people it's repulsive but mm. there are people who are wired this way where it's just fun i really want to go mm. deep yes i guess it's my jupiter in scorpio i'm curious when you looked at your galactic alignments for the first time, was there any star system that stood out? Did you have any experiences where something that you knew innately was validated or maybe some other synchronicity that kind of connected the dots? Actually, yes. I remember from our QHHT session when I regressed to... At that time, I didn't know where it was, when it was. All I could remember or, or see, feel, it was this immense 
feeling of unconditional love just being hugged and held by it but also the swirling energy like violet blue smoky flame with sparkles on a backdrop of the vast cosmos and when I looked into my chart later on years later <laughs> when studying I checked that also with Akashic Records and it seems it's been the connection to actors I love and it that also, makes a lot of sense I'm also drawing mandalas which for me they helped me through the hardest ch most challenging times in my life and I titled I actually did coloring book which is titled Suthic Mandalas and I feel like the energy of Pleione star in Pleiades the, the sanctuary of Pleiadians basically this healing retreat that's what is coming through them this energy this soothing calming healing energy a word totally that Pleiadians that's so interesting because the Pleiades is in your fifth house through your moon conjunction there and fifth house is about creative self-expression, what we give birth to into and bring into this world. Moon conjunction moon, so the emotional body and this really helped me work through my heavy sorrow, grief this type of emotions but i also like to use them when i'm joyous so therapeutic and beautiful beautifully presented highly recommend it so people can get it uh, directly on your website right and the website is quantum hyphen butterfly dot me we'll include the links in the video description too and uh, just going back to that truest connection so that's conjunct your saturn in your ninth house house of higher wisdom higher guidance your spiritual connections i think it's just such a beautiful placement to have in a chart so so glad that you received that validation and just recalling during the regression experience you know so happy that you shared the what it is like when you connect and you feel it with all the senses right it's you know you feel it sense it see it hear it it's moving well while we are here on the website let's um congratulations like beautiful beautiful work i'm so so glad that it worked out so well for you You've worked on it uh, for several weeks now so when people come to the homepage, they can explore it uh, the main focus is the quantum soul guidance modality right you can book the session you have this gorgeous headshot that you took that really brings the most beautiful essence out of you it's such a wonderful wonderful capture of your being so a little bit about you and then the services and then plenty of testimonials as well uh, just current prices that they might not stay different types of sessions would you like to talk a little bit about what types of readings you offer or uh, consultations in relation to galactic astrology so currently it's quantum soul guidance uh, consultation we, through experience i tend to just touch up on the most prominent connections through the galactic because i go through a lot of other aspects of your soul so we find out your soul color which is your essence and and as well i usually check the state of your chakras and karmic connections and where you at uh, working through karma and then i've been called to connect to the earthly past lives usually there are three of them sometimes it's more and depending on a client that are the most relevant helpful on your soul expansion journey and that we look into bring whatever will be helpful for you to know at the moment and at the very end i will go into the galactic aspects your soul beginnings in our universe where you basically for the first time split from the source and how your soul decided to experience and that usually take up around an hour and a half so going into galactic more would be too much that's why I offer another reading to someone who would like to follow up or just is interested in the galactic connections they can sign up to the galactic heritage reading which takes around an hour and we can dive deeper into galactic connections there i love that that's beautiful so the comprehensive one that you described first I would you say it's ideal for someone who is starting on their journey of exploring much deeper layers of their being. They kind of want to take a 
look from a higher perspective and actually explore the most dominant themes that are spreading across multiple incarnations. I would see this a lot in QHHD sessions and regressions, how even the own higher self decides to take client on that type of journey where I'm going to show you how you're repeating this pattern for multiple incarnations. And when you will see it through different personalities, different players, you have same soul family playing different roles, but still the theme is similar, sometimes really repeating over multiple incarnations. So it can be very eye-opening. And uh, when we suddenly decide, okay, I get it now. <laughs> Let's just kind of resolve this pattern, see what I'm learning here on a soul level. How can I keep the wisdom and release whatever the stagnation and limitations are there? So it's so beautiful that as a guide, you can help people with that. And then adding the galactic layer to it, because the story goes beyond that. It goes, it connects to more archetypal experiences of the collectives connected to certain star systems. I love how you divided that. But what I want to mention as well here is that this quantum soul guidance is in a way more immediate than the b bigger galactic picture. And people also learn a lot about what they can bring, not necessarily from the patterns that were repeated, but in my sessions, it seems to be what it's more coming through is whatever they already experience and they can bring in as as their talents as their skills as they already live through and they have access to it just needs to be activated and that i have seen quite a few times and was just wonderful to see and experience with them every single time it's also enriching my soul and my I learn a little bit more about myself as well I'm so grateful <laughs> for this course for you for, for for being able to to do this work it's just wonderful I'm so glad you you mentioned that and yeah focusing on the talents what brings people joy as well and one more thing that actually it was interesting to see that already happened a couple of times is that a client tried to do the aggression sessions before and for some reason they it didn't work for them they couldn't regress and now from just like a different way different modality we were able to access this past lifetime so it was really eye-opening for them and i love it i found in the past it was usually clients who are most analytical logical and uh had pattern of needing to control everything, they found it harder to trust and surrender into different part of their brain to guide them through the deep regression experience. So for them, something like this, this type of modality where actually there is a lot of data that they can see tangibly through astrological alignments, it can be really, really satisfying to get something like this. Great point. And also, I believe it was the divine timing of it all. Perhaps back then they weren't yeah. ready. It wasn't the time yet. So Yeah, and yet they, they received different layers of, of healing and expansion, even through the conversation itself. That was already the big step on their journey. Really good, Marco. Is there anything else important that you would like to share kind of where you've feel yourself heading with your sessions, with your focus going forward brings you most joy because it's such a buffet of, of things that we can explore through galactic astrology. What's your vision ahead? As you actually mentioned before, I always enjoyed exploring my patterns, my psychology, what, what runs me. And I like to dig deep and study in depth uh, certain topics. And what I want to bring forward as well, but those talents, the experiences, and what really brings me joy is the fact that people are getting validation and healing. Before we close, I am just curious about the name choice, Quantum Butterfly. Is there a significance with this um, symbolism? Would you like to share about that? Throughout my life, basically, butterflies were prevalent and I found it, it's been my, as early as I think it was seven or six years, seven, eight maybe years old, when we went quite often with my grandma. Uh, I was living in a mountain area in Poland, so uh, every Sunday or every weekend we would go hiking during the summertime. And one of those summers I had a butterfly on my shoe. Then when I actually took my hand out of it, it flew and sat on my hand. And it sat there for another 
half an hour or so, I was carrying it up to the top of the mountain, basically. And I remember everyone paying attention, noticing the fact that the butterfly is sitting on my hand. It was such a wonderful experience for me. It really stayed with me and stuck as such a delicate, beautiful thing was there with me walking. And since then, many, many times in my life, uh, this type of transformational metamorphosis, it happened countless times, really. And I could go back and feel the spirit animal looking after me those times. Now, when I get into your course and quantum just felt so right, quantum butterfly that actually spread its wings over all the connections, the galactic connections, it felt so right. And when I actually went into the Akashic Records, I believe my beginnings were with Asian dragons and the quantum butterfly is just one aspect of that energy accompanying me all my life. Amazing. I had goosebumps as you shared the early childhood story. By any chance, were you one of my clients who had a butterfly inside the room? There was one there was one time when I had maybe maybe a handful of clients where the room is closed, curtains are closed, everything is closed. And it was January was when it happened first time, 8th of January, I remember, when this beautiful Admiral butterfly was suddenly next to the client on the wall and there. Wow, I have chills now no it yeah. wasn't me <laughs> <laughs> I even took a picture and reported it on the you know seeing insects way out of their normal dates there is a mm -hmm. database here in Ireland it was pretty extraordinary and they had transformational QHSG session it was such a powerful symbolism I love it Marco well it's such a pleasure such an honor as we close, do you have any parting message, anything that you would like to share in closing with our audience? I've been probably repeating what many of us already said. To those who are in the curse, take your time. Everything is in divine timing, so don't feel rushed. I did a few times during the curse to be feeling like I'm taking so long, but don't. This is all right. And for those who are looking into booking the session with any of practitioners, just pay attention to what your body tells you when you go through the listing. And for your gut, follow your feelings because there is a right practitioner for you and you need to connect to that person on, on a deeper level. Trust that person. So your body's always right. I love it. Thank you very, very much. Thank you all for watching. Um, you can find Margot again at quantumbutterfly.me. Are you intending or planning to open social media accounts too, where you might be able to share some of the stories that may come up? What's yes, I will. A YouTube channel, uh, that's the medium of choice for me. And I already have a few sessions in the production <laughs> to share some sample sessions. Yes. That reminds me, there was a video already published on another channel, right? Can you tell me a little bit about that to, to remind me what was the name that was yeah tell me uh, more about that that was really that video would be also maybe in a slightly shorter version on my channel mm -hmm. but it's everyday masters on youtube i believe called the channel the youtube channel yeah. i have their conversation with case i believe it's an hour and a half we have a chat before the session and then well done for really finding courage to to do something like that because coming public you know on a channel that is known so everyday masters youtube channel really well done so super proud of you margot and i feel excited about your journey ahead oh, so much love to you and thank you all for watching take care see you again next time bye